Yo, Captain Claus, what's going on? Yep, yeah, I'm just chilling here with my boys, having a cup of coffee. I was just thinking about you. Yeah, every time I have my coffee, uh, I don't know why, but you just kind of pop in my head. You need a first mate. Wait, I don't have to drive? I don't have to bait. I can have some adult beverages for a change? And I can sleep in an extra two hours? <laughs> Sign me up. Just tell me when and where. Alright, I'll be there. See you close. Looks like we're going crabbing, boys. You don't want to go? Alright, well I'm going. A cute little cool intro for Captain Claus here. So Captain Claus wanted to hit the tread again. I wasn't particularly passionate about hitting it again, but uh, hey, why not? You know, the river should keep improving as the year progresses. So off to the tread we went, and he picked me up, and the uh, first thing that I learned, like I always love learning just new little tricks, trades, just maybe it's a spot, but uh, he went to the Port Street ramp. I've never been to the Port Street ramp. I was always aware that there was a second ramp on the tread. When I was learning, you know, someone pointed me at Bellevue, and that's where I always went, but I'd never been to Port Street. I didn't even research Port Street. Um, and I was so surprised how quick it was, given my route, how to get to Port Street. Um, I don't know if I'll ever go back to Bellevue. So if you've only used Bellevue, you've never used Port Street. Uh, so here's a map of the tread, and you can see Bellevue is over here, and Port Street's way up to the north, the north end of uh, Tread River. So here's a uh, Google Earth view of the uh, Port Street ramp. It's right next to East Point Marina. Um, it's only got two ramps. Um, it's kind of limited on parking. What do you see here? One, two, three, four, five, six, so maybe 12, 12 or so. Uh, parking spaces, four trailers, and they aren't very long. It is kind of cramped tight. They have a little barrier right outside the ramp. I guess that's from preventing people from just driving down Port Street and right into the water. Um, I don't really have much experience about it. Um, maybe you do if you have any experience with this ramp. Just leave comments down below. So this, this footage is all from May 29th of 2020. Um, it was five days after my first trip to the tread, which was on Memorial Day. Um, the temperature was pretty nice. I think it was one of the first days they were calling for 80s. Um, there was wind. It was light to moderate. It was more moderate towards the uh, end of the day, end of our trip. Uh, made things a little difficult, but uh, it wasn't horrible. Um, water temp was about 73. So it had gone up maybe two, three degrees from Monday, which is a good sign. So we motor on down south. And it was apparent, it was just like Memorial Day, there were lots of comms everywhere close to Port Street. It seems like we were dodging buoys everywhere. Um, so we got to a couple spots we wanted to lay in. Unfortunately, they seemed to be all taken with lines from commercial crabbers. We actually did deploy a line trying to find a lay in the middle of the mess. But, uh, you yeah, know, we got it laid, we got back, we're getting ready to run it. And really nice commercial crabber came over and told us we laid on his line. Now we were already at the start of that run, so Tony decided he wanted to run anyway just to see what was going on. And it was actually a good run. Um, I think we caught maybe 12, 15 crabs. We knew the crabs were definitely there. They actually looked slightly better than the ones they'd caught um, previous Monday. So we picked the line back up and we start checking Tony's other spots that he likes to sit in. Um, they all seemed to be taken and he was... He's hit this river so often, he was basically on a first name basis with several of the commercial crabbers. So we keep motoring, um, and unfortunately, and this is when the footage first starts rolling, we were forced almost all the way south of that branch of the tread. Not my boats, I don't have it all rigged up for cameras, but I did bring two. I wanted to try out, uh, I did this several years ago, um, install a, a GoPro in the dipping net. Um, let me know what you think. So if you watch this footage and you think it's too crazy, causes you motion sickness, just put that down below. If you like it and think it's cool, um, also let me down, know down in below. Just let me know what you think. 
So I'm going to show you now, and I'll just let the footage roll, was about three runs of the first, well, actually our second lay that we did. So the results were okay. We might have been catching anywhere between six to ten crabs a run, and maybe keepers, two to four keepers out of the six to ten. It didn't seem anything like our first lay, um, where we had to pull off because we laid over another commercial crabber's line. So at this point, it was between 10 and 11 o'clock, and we had to make a decision whether we were going to pack up for today. I know I'm getting to the good part. I'm going to try to get to the good part. Either we had to pack up for the day, or we we're going to relay and make a full day out of it. Originally, it was going to be a quick and dirty trip, um, but undetermined, Captain Claus said, let's lay one more time. So we went back to some of the spots, um, it just happened that one of the commercial crabbers that was in one of the areas he wanted to lay in was gone. It allowed us just enough room to squeeze his 1,200 feet of line into one of his spots. And this, as in the title, is where the magical moment happens. You could have consecutive trips and days that you're really not catching what you want. And you're on another day. Um, the point is to keep trying. So we laid this line. The conditions weren't great. Um, meaning the way we laid our line, we had a heck of a time trying to get this line laid out just because the wind kept blowing us everywhere. And you know how it is when you pull a line in with a winder, if you have a winder, you pull a line in and it makes a mess of your line as it goes into the basket and then you gotta go to re redeploy it and uh, it gets very knotty. We pushed through and persevered and got the line down, let it soak for a little bit. And what I'm gonna show you next is the very first run. That was only the dip neck cam. Uh, it wasn't until the following runs that I set up another camera so you get a better perspective. Um, so this is going to be the full first run in a new location. I'm going to speed up through some of the boring parts, but uh, it gets pretty comical. At one point, Tony yells, it's on fire. So let's let that one run. So that was an amazing line. I hadn't dipped, obviously I had an auto dipper all last year, so I didn't get to dip at all. I don't think I was in any friend's boat where I was mainly dipping. 
Um, I'm, I've really enjoyed dipping and I haven't dipped that. I can't remember the last time I had to dip so much so quick. I think at one point we had eight, ten in a row. That's when Tony yelled, it's on fire. Um, and we were immediately restoked. It was that magical moment you wait for, you persevere, persevere, keep pushing, and then all of a sudden you find them. Um, the crabs were obviously a lot more crabs. Um, at the end of that run, when I stopped it, so that was our call basket for that single run. I think we counted, it was 39.40 total, and we had 21 keepers. So I think we actually made two more runs after that, and then by the third or fourth run, I was like, hey, let me set up my other camera. So the next two runs I'm going to show you are probably fourth or fifth run in, um, where I have two perspectives. I could go back and forth between the neck cam and then just a little camera I had mounted on the side on the on this on his prop stick um, or on the side of his boat.
what I'm saying is when you see somebody who's like 50 miles away, yeah, 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 there you go. So what I'm saying is it'd be funny to listen to it and hear it or whatever, you know what I mean? Oh, 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 I saw the camera, I saw the camera.
Wasn't that a good story? Wasn't that a good story? I know. I know. So the point is, never give up. Never surrender. Don't be afraid to try to move to something new. You won't know until you try. Right? All right, everybody. Uh, we're on our way home. Got a long day. What time is it? About four o'clock. Um, let's just say the morning didn't go so well. It was kind of like a repeat of Monday, Memorial Day. Um, then on the device of Captain Claus here, he wanted to try a spot that we tried early in the morning, but we were kind of cut off by a lot of comms. Um, so when we picked up, tide slacked around. You speak uh, like you're not one of those comms yourself. Uh, well, not today. I, I'm not a commercial. I have a commercial license. I wouldn't call myself a true waterman. But anyway, we picked up when the slack tide was about 9, 9.30, 10.30. Uh, yep. Um, picked up at 10.30. Picked up, uh, went to his hole, honey hole. And lo and behold, it's like a whole different river. Um, Wait till you see the video. It's uh, it, it, was, it was pretty crazy. I was kind of excited myself. Like all the reports that I heard from like people I've talked to on the commercial watermen, um, on the forums, posts, all said trend small. Even some of my buyers were getting the same things from their crabbers. Um, but we found that we were averaging what? Uh, early on, the first run we it was 20. Low 20s, yeah. uh, keepers. We were catching 30, 40 on 1,200 feet, um, 600 feet of clams, and then 600 feet mixed chicken and uh, chicken clams. And they were biting both. Yeah, the clams, they, they did like the chicken. Uh, they weren't dropping off. We uh, saw lots of doublers. Uh, what else did we see? Anything else good? Uh, weather was, uh, got a little dicey at the end. Windy. Obviously, we didn't cause us lots of problems, so uh, yeah, you can make fun of us for missing some crabs, but uh, it was blowing a good 20, 25, uh, 20, 25 uh, knots. You have a mouse in your pocket? A mouse? Yeah, us. Make fun of us for us. Oh, 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 I got you on video, <laughs> Captain Claw. Uh, but anyway, we ended up with two bushels, so we basically restarted at 11, and I think we had couple dozen maybe a quarter bushel before we move yep and uh, probably a bushel three quarter in from about 11 till 3 30 3 o'clock yeah. we caught the rest bushel and seven and quarters. they were all better size wise too barely had to measure very big didn't have to measure hardly any of them <laughs> so compared to the previous uh, tread trip I did on Monday it was more like what I expected um, can't really give out the spot uh, but just gonna say go deep if you're not uh, may, look for a hole look for a shelf and just find the channel and go deep um, it was it was pretty crazy and I'd like to thank Captain Claus here for taking me out I really planned on uh, not going crabbing and uh, I thought I was gonna tag along um, but uh, his partner in crime dropped out so uh, he gave me a call last, last night and I figured more content for all my uh, subscribers so Thank you, Captain Claus. You're welcome. Anything you'd like to say? Uh, this is your first video? Uh, it is, actually. Well, first crabbing video, I guess. Yeah. Uh, well, those are the ones I send to my friends when I catch crabs. Um, nah, get out there. Get some crabs. Yep. To be a good crabber, you gotta move around. Gotta, gotta, gotta. Like, just don't go to one place and uh, call it a day. You just gotta try different things. I'm a so. huge believer in that move. I've moved a lot of times. So as many as eight times in a day before I found them. And uh, even with my uh, Wednesday trip where I went to the East I knew I was going to catch anything. I was just looking for intel, like, are people out there? Um, was there any 
signs of life, did the salt look good, what was the water clarity like, what were the temperatures around. Um, sometimes you're just going to have days to go out and you're not going to catch anything, but eventually it does pay off like today. So uh, until next time, I'll catch you later.